I like how you put that. Uh, you put that you're basically uh, lamenting that we have lost sight of the essential role of narrative in educating kids mm -hmm. and youth by not telling them all these uh, so-called pagan stories. So my question is, if uh, C.S. Lewis said, and we agree with him, that Christ is truly the meat that became fact, then God of the Bible is not just God of the Jews, but he's the God of all the nations. Mm -hmm. And if Lewis's work helped tons of Christians to reclaim the mythical, imaginative side of the faith, my question is, when you're dealing with a regular Joe in the church, uh, do you ever come to a position with all these questions, wondering how can you, uh, you know, read mythology? How can you reconcile it with faith? Do, do, you, do you even have questions who, with people who are in the church but can be skeptical and maybe diminishing your work because they're not able to understand? I mean, a lot of people I understand that they, okay. It, it comes down to this problem. Now, Nicola, I'm, I'm speaking, even tomorrow, I'm always speaking at classical Christian schools across the country. It is a wonderful movement. Homeschoolers have embraced it. University model schools, even some classical charter schools, public, trying to smuggle in the truth into our public school system. Not not easy thing to do. Um, and the funny thing is that this movement has been very much a Presbyterian movement, very much a Calvinist, not all of them. But it's very strong amongst Calvinists. And what's interesting is that it wasn't that long ago that most American Calvinists wanted nothing to do with natural law. They thought that was a Catholic thing. And unfortunately, when I was growing up, a lot of Calvinists had a misunderstanding of total depravity. Total depravity simply means that every part of us was subjected to the fall. So it's not just our body that's fallen, our soul has fallen, our, our mind, our reason, our imagination. There's no part of us. That is not affected by the fall. But a lot of Calvinists, when I was growing up, treated total depravity as if it meant utter depravity. So our black is God's white and God's white is our black. And there's nothing. And that's simply not true. We do have a sensus divinitatis, a sense of the divine, as Calvin himself made. In fact, Calvin begins his institutes by making the very distinction we've mentioned earlier between special revelation and general revelation. Yes, God does speak to us. General revelation does not save us, but it does draw us towards the truth. You might call it, as Francis Schaeffer did, a kind of pre-evangelism, getting you ready to hear the full proclamation of the gospel. But no, a lot of people are still very leery. I mean, there are still people that are Bible only, but the only book I need to read is the Bible. Well, the Bible is the only book we need to know Christ and find salvation. But it's not the only book we should read. It never purports to be a textbook about every single thing there is to think. Moses was trained in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, just as Daniel was trained in the wisdom of Babylon and Persia and used it to serve the one true God. So, yeah, look, none of us needs a college education for that matter. But if God has gifted us, with the ability, the mental ability, the, the financial ability, cultural ability to go to college and expand our knowledge so that more of us can be utilized by the Holy Spirit, uh, certainly we should do this. I mean, the Bible itself makes reference to books that are not in the Bible, right? It said, like when you're reading First and Second Kings, and this has been written more in this book. We don't even have that book, right? So we, again, we do have to be discerning. Uh, let, let, let me make a good uh, 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 caveat here, uh, Nicola. There is a place in the book of Acts where a bunch of Christians burn books. <gasps> oh, my gosh. These evil, primitive Christians. Look, they're not burning copies of the Iliad and the Odyssey and Aristotle. They're burning literally books of spells, sort of demonic books of spells for controlling the spirits. Yeah, those do need to be. And... There are some books that I would not let little children read because they're not ready for them, right? But older children and adults can read them with discernment, okay? We, we do have to be careful. Most of the so-called censorship in the Republic is censorship of the children and what they're reading when they're kids, okay? Well, I would hope, like in Florida, finally DeSantis is waking up and saying, yes, there are books little kids should not be reading. That's not mean he is censoring books as of course, the progressives are accusing him 
of censorship, but he's not censoring. He says giving age appropriate material. I mean, I think we all understand that. I hope you don't let your five year old watch Silence of the Lambs. God forbid anybody should watch that, actually, but certainly not a kid. I mean, it's just crazy. But anyway, the, but again, we can learn. I mean, uh, Paul had partly a Greek education. That's how he knew those bits and pieces of poetry and whatnot. And he, in fact, many people would say that Paul is the new man. He is Jewish by blood and by culture. He is partly Greek by his education, and he's Roman by his citizenship. And in him, we get the new man drawing all three together into one. And after all, the mystery that the Bible keeps talking about is the mystery that God has broken down the dividing wall between Jew and Gentile and made. A, that's the mystery. Uh, it, it's, it's not really the mystery of the gospel per se. It is by the gospel that the wall is torn down. And that's the mystery that no one ever thought possible. And yet here God is doing it because Christ is the Jewish Messiah, but he's also the savior of the world, breaking down the dividing wall between Jew and Gentile and making one out of the two, which is really good news. <laughs>